Welcome to this NGWA Industry Connected video, which is brought to you by Franklin Electric, an industry partner of the National Groundwater Association and diamond sponsor of Groundwater Week 2021. Hello, this is Marvin Glotfelke with another Industry Connected video from the National Groundwater Association. And uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, flooded reverse drilling. In previous industry connected videos, I've talked about other types of drilling. We've talked about dual rotary, we talked about direct mud rotary, we talked about direct air rotary. So all of these are applicable in various instances that we may encounter. So today I wanted to talk about flooded reverse rotary um, commonly used for larger diameter, maybe deeper uh, wells. And I have, a, I will do a, share my screen here and show you a uh, little PowerPoint, make things clearer. So here's a picture of a flooded reverse rig, fairly large rigs, because they, as they drill deeper and larger diameter, they have to be able to accommodate the uh, heavier string weight. And so we, as with all drilling types, we have advantages and we have disadvantages. So the advantages is that it's cost effective for large diameter borings. And I'll, I'll show you why when I have a schematic of this drilling method. Uh, it's very good for collecting data, the ge geologic and hydrologic data that we need for the uh, site specific design of a well can come from this drilling method very readily. And we can drill with not quite, but almost clear water in some cases. That is to say that our drilling fluid isn't a higher viscosity mud like with direct mud rotary drilling. It can be pretty thin with maybe a little bit of soda ash or polymer added just to kind of uh, improve the efficiency of both the wall cake to stabilize the borehole and the removal of cuttings. So. This is a good method. Um, it does have its disadvantages. Um, one is because of the nature of the flooded reverse, we're adding water to the borehole faster than the earth can soak it away. That means that we need to have a construction water source. We're in a very remote area where water, uh, construction water needs to be trucked to the site. This may not be the way to go, but if we have a water source, say a hydrant nearby, then um, we, and, and I'm showing here about 200 gallons per minute. It may not be that much. It may be more than that. It just varies depending on the nature of the formation we're drilling. And then the last disadvantage, of course, because we're filling the borehole with fluids to stabilize it, we don't know the depth of the water table until we've, uh, until we've isolated a, a zone. So if we don't know the depth of the water table, then we won't know it as we're drilling. So here's a schematic of a flooded reverse drilling rig, and I'll show labels on things. So we have our drill bit down here, uh, but it's a fairly large di uh, diameter uh, drill string. So our, our collars and our drill pipe are probably five inches or so, uh, as opposed to maybe um, three inches or even less for a direct rotary, then that's because we're bringing our cuttings up through this string. Um, we do that with an air compressor here. We, air compressor has an airline that goes down with an adequate submergence so that when we blow on that air compressor, we can cause the air to take its path of least resistance, which is to turn around and have a venturi effect and blow up through the drill string. And when that happens, in the fluid is removed, we're basically turning the drill bit to a vacuum cleaner. So as we drill cuttings, we are bringing our cuttings up through the drill string, through the Kelly hose, down the standpipe, into our pit, which can be above ground or in the earth as shown here. And then to complete the cycle, the fluid after it's clarified by either uh, settling in a pit or with solids removable equipment such as shell shakers, etc. It can be then flowed back down the borehole. So this means that as we advance the borehole and as fluids soak into the earth, we need to have a water source that's adding more fluid to the pit 
that can flow into the uh, borehole to keep it full, so we stabilize it. So this is a why we need a water source, and it's why we can have pretty clear water. We don't really rely on the the velocity and the viscosity of this fluid to bring cuttings up the annulus outside the drill pipe. Cuttings are coming up the inside, and that means we have a smaller cross-sectional area. The fluid can move more rapidly. We can have very efficient uh, delivery of cuttings for, from a geologist standpoint. We get great cuttings because they come up the inside of the drill pipe. The bottoms up time is very rapid. And so we know what we're drilling through as we go. Typically, we advance this borehole with one size drill bit, maybe between 15 and 17 and a half inches diameter. And then can come in with a reamer and widen the borehole to its final diameter for completion of a well. And this might be something between a uh, 12 inch up to 20 inch diameter casing when we're done. So maybe the borehole itself may be over two feet in diameter. So for larger boreholes like that, if we were to do it with direct mud rotary, we could, but we would have to build the volume of fluid and that would cost more money. And that's why this is cost effective. We're spending less money on drilling fluid and, and using a method that can allow us to drill with more just basically clear water. So um, this, is, uh, this is a very standard uh, technique. It's an alternative to direct mud or air rotary, and it is um, very successful in many cases here. So I will unshare share my screen. And I recommend uh, use of this in places like um, in alluvial basins where there's a deep, large diameter borehole, things like that. In my area around the southwestern United States, it's very common. Um, I, I don't know if it's less common elsewhere, but I, I think it's actually used successfully in many parts of the country. So with that, I will talk to you next time and have a great day.